Hi everybody, welcome to Gwynny TV. I have a special guest with me today, Lady Roz from Granite Mountain. Uh, you guys have probably seen her live videos she does on Facebook. They're absolutely amazing. Uh, she, like myself, loves to cook for the SCA. And so um, today, we, when we decided to do the Guinness and Steak Pie, um, we decided to do it together for you. So uh, so today's recipe is Guinness Steak Pie. I taught a class last weekend on planning and publicizing a war kitchen. And people heard about Guinness and Steak Pie went, I'm going to need that recipe, please. And so we decided this would be next up in the line of recipes I cook live for you. Well, live-ish. Um, do you want to tell me a little bit about yourself? Um, I really enjoy running war kitchens um, I usually and, and running feasts and doing feasts for my local group. Um, I often like to also film when I'm getting ready. I think it's a really fun process and it's a really neat thing for our populace to see what goes into something like this and what type of effort is given from our cooks for this kingdom. So um, I'm up in Granite Mountain and you should come meet with us sometime. Cause it's totally fun up there, I love it. So, all right guys, well um, I'm going to uh, switch around the direction of the video. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, the ingredients. So you're going to go into Guinness and steak pie. Uh, so we're going to start off with three tablespoons of olive oil. Um, it does actually get divided through this cooking process, but the total amount needed for the recipe is three tablespoons. Uh, we have uh, it, the recipe calls for one pound of cubed beef, but I'm cooking for a lot of people today, so I kind of upped that. It's about 1.75 pounds of cubed beef there. Um, I actually used a rump roast this time, but here's the really great thing about this recipe. Um, you know when you cook a risotto and you just keep adding, adding broth to the arborio rice and it gets more and more creamy as you cook it? I treat this Guinness stew the exact same way because um, that's really what's going into the filling. It's, it's a very thick Guinness stew. Um, and what's really beautiful about it as we add the Guinness to it, I just keep adding the Guinness to it as it cooks down. And so you can use the most horrible, cheap, crappy piece of meat for this recipe. And it'll come out beautifully and moist and wonderful. So um, I just happened to, to get this rump roast on sale. And so um, I cut it up, cubed it to be about all the same size and cubes so it'll cook nicely. Um, but again, the cut of meat doesn't really matter for this recipe. Um, Next up, we have um, two slices of bacon that have been cut up. They're going to cook down. They're going to be beautiful. Um, for this particular um, one, we're using a cherry wood smoked bacon because um, it happened to be on sale at Safeway. So um, I've done it with a, uh, apple wood smoked before. I've done it with just your basic bacon, but I thought maybe the cherry would be a nice, um, nice new flavor to add to this. So we're going to give that a shot. Uh, we have one large onion. Uh, in a nice, good, rough dice. Uh, it's going to cook up beautifully, become brown and soft and lovely in the filling. Uh, we have some carrots. Now, again, the recipe count calls for one carrot. I generally do put in two carrots. I like a lot of extra carrot in mine. A lot of times what I'll do, though, is do maybe one carrot and one parsnip diced up. Um, the parsnip adds, especially if I'm using like an applewood smoked bacon, a really nice apple-y flavor to the filling that I really enjoy and other people seem to like. So um, today that we've, we've just diced up two carrots. Um, in addition, I have a third pound of mushrooms um, just sliced up. Again, they're going to you know cook down and so the, the, the dice that you use with the slice doesn't have to be perfect because everything's going to cook down. Be super beautifully um, tasting. Um, I have some garlic. Ken calls for one clove of garlic. That's clearly more than one clove of garlic because God knows this family likes garlic. Um, I do have a um, teaspoon of white sugar, a teaspoon and a half, oh, excuse me, a tablespoon and a half of all-purpose flour, the all-important Irish stout beer. Um, so it starts with a cup of it. I, of course, have picked the lovely, beautiful Guinness Extra Stout. Um, I use way more than a cup in this recipe because, like I said, I cook it a little hot. So then I'm continuously adding that stout beer um, to make it really taste deep and rich and wonderful. Um, I also have one and a quarter cup of beef stock, uh, some ground thyme, a couple bay leaves hanging out. There's some water that we end up using for this, some cornstarch. 
Um, I am doing um, just pre-made pie crust because that's the easiest thing to be able to do. And then one beaten egg. When this all comes together, it's going to make the most beautiful get a steak pie that we're all going to enjoy together because we missed each other terribly um, for our meal tonight. So uh, first thing for us to do is to actually heat up the oil and to brown the meat on all sides. So we'll go ahead and, and sort of switch views and be back with you in just a moment. So we've gone ahead and switched views so that we have uh, our stove top going today. So I have uh, just a medium sized pot going on the stove. Um, our oil has gone into that. Now again, recipe called for dividing that olive oil. Uh, two tablespoons to cook and brown the meat and then a tablespoon later on when we're doing the vegetables. However, because I'm using more meat than the recipe calls for, I've used all three tablespoons of oil in the pot um, and heated it up. Um, and I've, re I've got a different tablespoon of oil to use for the, the vegetables later on. So um, one of the really cool ways that I check to make sure my oil is hot and I'm ready to cook for it is I fry water. I know it sounds really weird, right? So I just kind of go over to my sink and put a little like couple of drops of water on my fingers and I flick it into my oil and you kind of hear it. It went, oh, it's so hot in here. Um, yeah, that means great. I fried water. Now I can do some meat. So um, it's a neat little trick my brother, grandmother taught me years and years ago. So um, we're going to do this meat in batches. So um, I'm going to want to add it sort of piece by piece because I don't want it to get too crowded into the pot. And it doesn't brown. It doesn't brown. And I, I really want to make sure that I try to get all the sides of this meat brown. That's what's going to give it a really deep, uh, rich taste as I'm cooking this. Get in there off my face. Uh, <laughs> just because you want to, you know, you know what that's right? Um, so as Roz is adding the meat to the pot, um, try and keep, and again, it's not like you have to, you know, you cook 10 pieces at a time or anything. It keeps some space around that meat, so as you're turning it, everything's going to start to brown really nice and beautifully. Um, you, of course, certainly, you, like, you don't want to burn the meat. That is not the purpose of doing this. Um, but browning that meat, you're not likely going to cook through those cubes, and that's fine because we'll add it back in later, and it's going to cook completely within the sauce. Um, that's going to be our pie filling, so it works out really well like that. Um, so we'll get these added in here. We'll brown them on all sides. You can kind of see on the other side of our pot, on the other side of our stove, I just have a little tray set up with um, lined uh, paper towels. Um, because as these finish browning on all sides, I want to remove them to that and take the extra oil off of them, right? Um, I mean, you know, come on, I'm browning this in a decent amount of olive oil. It's not the most healthy recipe in the world, and that's okay. Um, but I'm going to remove any extra fat that I can from my diet. Um, that's just me in particular. So we'll work on browning all these sides. When we're done browning all the meat, we'll be back with you and we'll talk about continuing on to prepare this recipe. So we're coming back to touch base with you. We're still working on browning the meat. And one of the great things that, that Roz and I were talking about as we do this is sort of how do you turn that meat? It's going to be your natural tendency to want to do this as quickly as possible. Don't. Right? So Roz, how would you suggest turning this to make sure we get everything brown and, and well done? Um, so one of the things we were talking about is I, I want to do things quick. I'm usually in a fast pace, I just stir stuff. But I was noticing that Gwen is turning them one by one, which makes complete sense. It makes sure that they're all browned, all on the same side, um, even browning throughout all of the pieces. Um, so we were doing it one by one with tongs. You know, just getting, make sure we get all of those sides and make sure we find, oh, there's another piece that we could churn a little bit. You know, get to fry a little more. But as you're doing that, you can see we can really closely monitor, right, how brown each side of that beef is getting. Well, and how done it is, you know, by knowing how uh, dense the squish is, is. we can yep. see how much longer it has before it finishes. Absolutely. And so, you, and you can feel that very easily as you're turning it with the tongs. So, you know, resist that urge to quickly go, oh, I'm just going to stir it really quickly. It'll be fine. First of all, you are likely to get oil everywhere. And it's going to get, it's going to bubble up anyway. Trust me, but stirring it does not help the process. Um, the thing you do want to be cautious about is as you are turning it, Make sure you are careful. Don't don't just kind of turn it and drop it back down in there because that oil could have a tendency to splash back up, and I don't want anybody to get burned because it is very hot oil. 
So think about that. But yeah, turning it one at a time, definitely helpful. So we'll finish browning up the meat and, uh, and talk to you guys in a little bit. All right, so we have browned up all the meat and we wanna show you how beautifully all of this has rendered down. Um, so I'm gonna kind of pick up the camera a little bit. Look how beautiful all that juice is in there. Casey's gonna kind of take and drag that. Across. Look how beautiful that is, right? I'm not gonna get rid of any of that. I want my vegetables to cook in that. Maybe just a little bit more oil. Um, it's gonna add such a beautiful, deep flavor to this pie filling as we're cooking it. Um, it's gonna be so absolutely amazing. Um, but when we, we kind of think about the meat too, it's been browned on all sides. Again, all oh, pieces are done all the way through. It's okay, it doesn't matter. It's all gonna go back in anyway and cook down in the sauce. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and add just, not, not the whole tablespoon probably, but just a little bit of oil. Mm -hmm. Casey Joe's gonna add in those two slices of the cherry wood smoked bacon. Okay, we're not gonna cook those all the way through either. We're gonna start to render them down, however. And, uh, and start getting them, eh, a little crispy, uh, but not fully crispy as we go through. Okay. It won't take us too long to start rendering down this bacon. Um, I'm really curious, and you know, of course, we'll taste before we add it into the pie and let you know. But I'm really curious about the cherry wood smoked bacon. Um, I've, I've actually never used it in a, in a recipe before, but I've been having it now with the you know, some, some uh, scrambled eggs or, uh, you know, a piece of it with a, a fried egg in the morning for breakfast. It's got a really nice flavor to it. I'm really enjoying it. It cooks up really nice, too. So, uh, so we're going to go ahead and start getting, getting this rendered down. Oh, it smells, this is not really smells so good. It smells so good. Like, I'm so hungry right now. And we did have lunch not that long ago. But God, I'm hungry. Want some of this? Mm. Now again, I just want to start this this bacon to start to kind of render down and release some of the fat that it's got going on. Because again, I didn't add too much um, olive oil back into my pan. It still had some from when we browned the meat, um, and so I just want to put a little bit of fat from that bacon as we add the vegetables in here. So uh, we're going to go ahead and um, add in our um, two carrots. That full diced onion is going to go in next. And then last but not least, we're going to get that, um, those, those mushrooms in there as well. And then I'm going to give those a really good stir before I add the garlic in because I want the garlic to kind of, um, get on to all of the veggies, if you will. And you know, right now my veggies in here are kind of layered, so I'll give them a good stir around. Oh, it's an escaping mushroom, how terrible. All right, there we go, that's a nice stir. So we've got our beautiful garlic. I wish you guys could smell this as we're cooking it. Yeah, the smell of vision should be a thing. Sadly, it's not. Um, I'm gonna switch my, my tool. I'm gonna go ahead and, and grab myself a nice plastic spatula and get that all stirred up around into there. Um, I didn't actually have to on this, but I will tell you there's lots of beautiful brownie bits in the bottom from the cooking off of the meat. And um, if they were sticking to the bottom, um, I would have probably thrown in maybe, I don't know, a eighth of a cup or you know, even just a splash of white wine in here to be able to scrape up and get all the burning bits off the bottom of the pan. Because again, I want that flavor um, in here. So um, all of our veggies are in here. Uh, we're gonna cook these down so they start to get soft. I want my onions to become translucent. Um, I really will cook them down long enough because I do like some caramelization um, to my onion, uh, to be honest with you. Um, I, I, again, I think it adds to the depth of the flavor um, of that pie filling. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that gorgeous? So pretty. So, so, so pretty. Um, the, to add to that caramelization, I almost forgot, I don't want to forget it because this is mm. so helpful, is I have that little bit of sugar that we have. This is just your regular old white granulated sugar. I'm going to sprinkle that across the top and give it a good stir down in there. That's going to add 
adds uh, the sugars to it to be able to start a caramelization process. Okay. I know we had some oil left over. Do you think we it did. needs any more? I don't or? think so. I don't so. think it is yeah. either looking at it. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep an eye on it, but really at this point, all of the veggies and everything um, have an oil coat to it, yeah. and I don't want it to become greasy, right? There's a difference between nicely oiling something so that it can brown and do its thing. And saturating. And saturating <laughs> it so that, yeah, it becomes greasy. It could be a fine line. <laughs> yeah, a very fine line. Apparently I had that problem yesterday going to make some eggs, but okay. Um, so we're going to cook this down. It's going to take us about 10 or 15 minutes to accomplish that. So we'll go ahead and again take a commercial break. No, still haven't talked to the whiskey bars yet, but I really again need to do that so we can have commercial breaks. Um, and then we'll check back in with you and we'll keep cooking our pie filling. All right, hi, we are back. Uh, we have been rendering down and cooking all these beautiful vegetables and the bacon. Um, things are absolutely looking beautiful. Let me give you a shot of this right here. See how beautiful and gorgeous that is? Um, you know, you can see there's not a, a lot of liquid left in here, and that's okay. That's kind of what we want. Um, as we're cooking this down, what I've been watching for, though, is if, if it got too hot and, and too little liquid in here, you could get little Bernie Brown bits at the bottom. Um, I didn't happen with this one because we've been watching it pretty carefully. But if it did, I could easily get those up and add them to the beautiful, deep taste of the pie filling just by putting a little um, white wine in it. The wine's going to cook off. It's it, it's just a dry white wine, so it's not going to counterdict with the stout. Um, but yeah, it's it's absolutely beautiful to get that in there. We just didn't happen to burn any of our food, which is great. Um, so uh, what we are going to actually go ahead and do is add some stuff um, into here. I'm going to sprinkle that uh, one. I think it was one and a half tea tablespoons of the all-purpose flour in here, and I'm going to stir that in my veggies to coat them. Um, well, we can just, uh, there, there, yeah. Um, so I want to stir the vegetables and get the, them all kind of coated in that flour because then as the pie filling is cooking, um, it's going to help to kind of keep it thick. I don't want to, I can't have a runny pie filling and put it in my pie and it's going to make everything too mushy and the pie crust isn't going to form properly and bake up and be crisp and beautiful and flaky, right? So, um, so that is, that's why I want that flour in there. Uh, next up, we're going to go ahead and start with a cup of the um, extra stout Guinness. Go for it. Mm, so beautiful. Um, I like using the, the extra stout Guinness. You could use any deep, rich beer if you wanted. Um, but it, again, I prefer this pie filling with a really deep, beautiful um, flavor to it. I don't know a better way to explain it than that. Um, but it, it absolutely smells mm. so, so good. Um, to this, we are also though, to get some additional liquid in here, we're gonna add some of our, uh, add our beef stock. Okay, Just a cup of that beef stock in there. Give that a good stir. Now we wanna get some of our flavorings going on in here. So, in case if you wanna add that ground thyme. Mm. And then we're going to add a couple of bay leaves. I'm actually adding about the total of three bay leaves in here. Um, we've talked about this when I, I did the video for the forest stew. I could easily put those bay leaves in like a cheesecloth or something of that nature and drop them in there. Make them super easy to pull out and find when I'm done. Because nobody wants to eat that bay leaf. <laughs> it's not going to be a pleasant time if they do. Um, however, to be honest with you, yeah, no, right? Um, however... Um, I'm fine just plopping them in here and then just be very careful as I finish this before I put it into my pie filling to get those bay leaves out. So they're not a terrible little surprise for, for people. Okay. Uh, so we're going to give that a little stir. Uh, I'm going to give it a second to warm up the, um, the beer and everything. Um, before we go ahead and add our reserved beef in there. Now, when we add our reserved beef, it's been set off to the side, right? So it's gotten kind of cold. It's gonna change the temperature of what's going on in my pot. It's gonna drop dramatically. Then the recipe calls for it. I really recommend that once you add that meat in there, you bring it back up to a boil. So before I actually add that meat, I'm gonna take it up a couple of notches on the stove. So I've gone from a very medium heat on my stove, it's a six. Um, I turned it up a couple of notches to an eight, okay? Uh, Casey Joe, if you wanna start adding that meat in here, 
And we're gonna add it in just a little bit at a time. I'm gonna kind of stir as I do it. Um, yes, you could turn it over and just plop it right in, but again, you run the risk of making a terrible mess because there's a lot of liquid in this pot now that might spill up over it. I don't know about you, but I want to be left cleaning up as little as possible after I cook. And not grab the paper towel with the tongs. Yes, and not grab the paper towel with the tongs. Trying to get it close enough that we can grab it right now. It's okay. <laughs> Super fun. This is when we should just turn it up. Yeah, I was gonna say once you get once you get quite a bit of it up, you feel free to turn it up and, and kind of pour it in if you want to. I just don't recommend it doing it with an entire tray full of the meat because then you are likely to do what I say, sploosh it out over the edge. Um, one, you lose some of the, the liquid that you need to cook and cook this down. Um, you know, but in addition to that, you're just making a gigantic mess you gotta clean up later. So we try to, to not do that as much as possible. You'll kind of see as she turns that up, right? You can see those paper towels. They're they're, they're kind of greasy, right? Um, yeah, is there a little flavor I lost there? Because you could see the brown on it a little bit. Yeah. Um, however, I, again, I don't I don't want a greasy I don't want a greasy pie filling. So you know, for me, um, I am absolutely okay uh, for going a little bit of that by draining the meat onto that that paper towel to get rid of extra grease. Um, you know, and and there are other ways for me to put that flavor in here. And trust me, it's not gonna not going to miss it. There is lots of lovely flavor in here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, cover this and we are going to start to cook it down. And Casey Joe, you can't see her. She's off camera, but she's got those paper towels and she's like, it smells so, so good. good. <laughs> and I'm like, I looked over and I'm like, well, that's not sight I've never seen before. <laughs> um, so we're going to cover this. Uh, we're going to bring it up to a boil. Once it is boiling, you can back off the heat a little bit and take it down to a simmer. Keep it covered though, because that helps to retain that heat as it's cooking. Um, but we're going to really let this cook for about an hour and 15 minutes. Now, my secret to this is the recipe only calls for like a cup of that stout beer. However, I'm going to keep an eye on it. And as this starts to cook down, right? And as that liquid starts to kind of thicken, right? I'm going to continue to just pour a little bit more of that beer in here and cook it down and cook it down and cook it down all during that hundred or that hundred that hour and 15 minutes and and you will thank yourself if you do that same thing because the flavor enhancement is just absolutely outstanding so um so we'll check in with you during that process so you can see sort of when is that time i choose to add some more stout to it right when is that de decision process like oh now add it in there now um so we'll check back in with you, but uh, uh, until then, you guys can uh, maybe start to think about when you're going to make this for your family or your friends, because um, they will thank you when you do. All right, so we are back. Our lovely pie filling is is uh, simmering. To be honest with you, again, I, it's really kind of a boil for me, because again, I cook a little hotter than normal, because uh, I like to continuously be able to come back in and add some more of that stout to it to make the pie filling flavor much richer. So, um, Casey's just dying. She wants to try it so bad. I'm like, no, not ready yet. Not ready yet. Um, so, look, part of that seemed to maybe go away so you guys can see that, right? Um, so, it's been cooking down. It has probably not reduced by half, uh, but it's probably reduced by about a quarter by volume for the, the liquid. So, I'm going to take some more of the Guinness stout add it in. It's going to bubble up nice and foamy because that's what a Guinness Stout does. Give it another good stir. We are probably about half an hour in to this cooking process. So we're going to put that lid back on to the pie filling. La, la, la. Keep it here. It's going to come back up to a nice simmer again because remember I added that stout in so it reduced the temperature. So it's got to come back up to that simmer. Uh, probably about another hour, uh, excuse me, probably another 30 minutes, I'll add the remaining little bit of this stout that's in here. So really it's like one bottle of stout. Um, and, uh, and cook it for another 30 minutes after that. And then we'll be back with you to talk about how do you get the sauce to kind of thicken up a little bit before you add it into the pie filling and bake off the pie. So we'll be back with you shortly. All right, hi everybody, we are back. Um, the, oh my God, this is just smells so good. 
Oh, it looks so good, smells so good. You will see that that sauce has kind of started to thicken up in there. There's still a decent amount of liquid, right? Still a little liquidy for me to pull straight onto a, a pie pan. Um, but before we deal with that, we gotta take care of a couple of things. So, remember we put some bay leaves in here. And I don't know if you knew, but bay leaves are basically laurels. And, uh, you know, I don't know, Casey Joe, if I would wanna leave this in here, because something tells me a laurel would not taste very good in my mouth. So, we're gonna go ahead and pull out these bay leaves. Are you gonna hold that for me? And I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go on the great hunt, the great laurel hunt. We're going on a laurel hunt. Another one. <laughs> oh, and I dropped it because it's a little sticky from the sauce. <laughs> and then I think we've got a couple of extra little pieces flying around, floating around in there somewhere. So yeah, just make sure. I think there's two small pieces. Yeah. So, yeah. There's a little piece right there. A little there. piece right there. You're going to get out of here too. And hi, Simon. How are you? Are you lurking? He's not lurking. He's like, I want. I would like that right now. So I'm just going to take a quick peek. Make sure that everything is out of here. Don't suck on the laurel leaf. God. That's so, what she said? That's what she said, yes. All right, so uh, so all the laurel leaves or all the bay leaves are out of here. I think they're gone. Um, we want this to sauce to thicken up just a tiny bit more, tiny bit more. So uh, you remember when we started this process with we all the ingredients, we talked about having some cornstarch and some water. Um, and so in my little my little bowl here, I have added those two things together, stirred it up to kind of make a little slurry. You don't need very much um, unless you have. What are you playing? Get out of here. Um, unless you are uh, have a lot of leftover liquid and it's just not kind of cooking down well, but I've never actually had that problem. So uh, I'm going to pour my little slurry in here. This is something that I always struggle with because I always like a real thick sauce. Uh -huh. So I tend to put more cornstarch than I probably should. And a sneaky little bay leaf. It's yeah. still stuck in there. I'm going to have to do Thank you. All right, so yeah, and, and I, again, I want this to have a little liquid to it because it's going to go into the oven next. It's still going to continue to cook. I don't want it to be dry, um, but I also don't want it to be soup, right? I want it to be like a really very nice thick stew, okay? Um, now, now that we've added that cornstarch slurry, it's going to hang out in here for just a little bit longer, probably five to ten minutes. Um, I've actually turned my heat off. You could have it on a very, very low heat. The residual heat from this is going to be enough um, to thicken this up for me. So we'll be back with you in a few minutes and we'll get everything added to the pie crust. All right, so we are back. Um, our pie filling is beautiful and lovely and uh, just tastes amazing because we, we tried a little bit of it, not going to lie. So we are ready now to assemble our pie. Uh, now the recipe, and I'll post the recipe in comments um, uh, when I put this up on YouTube and send it out on Facebook. Um, but I've gone ahead and put a pie crust in the bottom because I like a bottom pie crust for, uh, oh, pie crust for this filling. Um, but the recipe doesn't call for one. They just have a, a, a one pie crust across, across the top. Um, so I'm going to get one right now because there are people in my living room getting ready to fence. So it's pretty funny. <laughs> Safely and at a good distance. Um, so, and what? And measure. And measure. And, measure. and they've measured. I'm sure they've measured because that's what rape your boys do. Um, so we have our pie crust here in our pie pan. Um, I have a pie crust to go on the top. Um, and then I, I have another little layer of pie crust to show you because I've made a really cool little design to put on top of my pie. But first we got to get our filling in here. So... I'm going to go ahead and grab my filling. Does that not look ridiculously yummy and just beautiful? Um, yeah, so we're going to pour that all into here. For those of you following along at home, um, watching it on the screen and seeing it in real life, I've noticed that it's a little darker in real life, so don't be yeah. afraid if it's not a, a light color. Yeah. Um, it's very definitely darker in real life. Yeah, because you have made... Showing up on the yeah, phone. Remember, yeah, and, and you have done a, a really really dark stout beer into mm -hmm. this, right? So it's gonna make it a very dark filling. Again, all of those little brown and birdie bits from the bottom as well have come up into here. Um, oh gosh, so pretty, right? Mm -hmm. So 
Uh, my filling, you can see, does not come up all the way up to the sides of my pie crust, and that is absolutely fine. I really, for my purposes, I don't, I don't want it to, um, because again, I'm going to lay, uh, lay another pie crust on top of here. You're going to watch how I kind of uh, assemble those two together for this particular pie, um, because it's savory. Um, I do a little differently than if I were doing a, a sweet pie. So, but all of that beautiful loveliness is out of there. Put that back on. I'll leave that out of my way. So I'm going to go ahead and take my second pie crust as quickly as possible because it is it's defrosted, right? It's still got a little cool to it, but it's pie crust, right? So it's butter. So the minute I go lay this on top of here, let me tell you, that sucker is going to get hot and, and melty, and I want to get it into the oven as quick as possible. Um, I have preheated my oven to 350 degrees. I'm going to take this pie crust, and I'm going to kind of roll the edges down and push it so it meets the edges of the pie crust that's underneath of it, okay? Creating that nice pocket, pocket for it, yeah. It ends up, it does really well. And if a little bit of it burbles up, it's okay, it's not a big deal, it is what it is. It won't make it taste bad, it won't. It might make it a little messy, but you know. Well, I don't want to clean up lots of mess, a little mess, I'm okay. especially if it tastes good. I don't care. So I'm getting that rolled down and kind of push onto that first pie crust, okay? And it's a little warm now because I've had this filling, so I'm not going to really pick it up and show it to you, but I will kind of lean the phone in a little bit here. And i got to go that way. So you'll see how that's kind of all kind of crimped together. Now, I'm about making things really kind of cool and pretty. And a um, while ago, while ago, I went to Great Western War, and I... Um, I made some of these for Great Western War. As a matter of fact, um, my friends Tristan and Bobby Anna, which king and queen at the time. And um, and so I got it into my head that I would make them sun and splendor egg wash. Guinness pies, right? Uh, oh, I'm going to do the whole egg wash. I'll do the whole thing. Oh, that's right. Yeah. No, it's okay. Um, so I have created, to go along the top of that, a little sun and splendor in honor of my friends Tristan and Damiana. Um because it, it cracks me up and it's cute, right? I just cut out a circle, it's a little smaller than the topping it's going on to. What I think is really cute is I just triangled the little rays of the sun. Um, I'm gonna push this down on here and the rays of the sun kind of poke up, if you will, and kind of fold over the top of the pie pan that I'm using. Um, I'm using a nine inch pie dish, by the way. Um, it's a ceramic. I have a glass one I could have used too, but I, I like this one because actually in the bottom of here is also a sun, <laughs> an eight melt sun. So it works out something like that. Eight melt pie. It's an eight melt pie. So, right. So we have our cute little pie crust going on the top here. Ta-da! Right. Um, last thing I want to do before I pop this into the oven is I'm gonna do a little egg wash on the top of it. So I have my one beaten egg that we talked about as we went through our ingredient list. I have my nice little pastry brush. I got a couple of them. The one I prefer to use is actually my, my um, little plasticky one because it's so much easier to clean. Um, so I'm gonna take my egg wash across the top here, give it a good brushing. It does not need to bathe in the egg wash. This egg wash is just gonna really kind of give it some color as it bakes. So it's not really a wash, it's more of a... Yeah. A, it, it's just a, a beaten egg. A beaten egg. Yes, it's just a beaten egg. Although I did yesterday, um, I, I, um, my friend, Lady Irma Sinda from the Baron of the Sun Dragon, um, she taught a, a virtual class on uh, making apple turnovers. Mm. And she talked about how actually she prefers to actually use a true egg wash where it's just the egg yolk yes. and some water because she really believes that kind of browns up better and things of that nature. I actually meant to try that today with this and totally forgot to do it. So the egg is what we get. All right. Fresh all over this. Yeah, guys, literally people with chain mail in my living room right now. I'm just saying. All right. So beautiful egg wash going on here. Now that that's all done, we will pause again. It's going to um, go into the oven. Uh, again, preheated oven at 350 degrees. I'm um, going to keep that in there for about 30 to 40 minutes. Um, you know, things in there are gonna still cook just a little bit. My pie filling is going to thicken up a little bit more because of the cornstarch slurry we added to it. 
And then of course the crust is gonna cook up beautifully. So we'll be back with you in about 30 to 40 minutes to look at our finished product and try our wonderful Guinness steak pie. We are back. So uh, I went ahead and left the um, Guinness steak pie in the oven for the full 40 minutes. Um, I looked at it at 30 minutes and it didn't kind of have enough color for me um, on that top pie crust. I'm sure it was cooked all the way through, but I just really wanted a beautiful golden color on the pie crust. So I'm going to kind of, I'm going to tip this down so that you can see the beautiful sun and splendor pie crust. Isn't that pretty? Absolutely love it. Uh, makes me a little bit sad to cut into it. However, I know how good it's going to taste, so I am going to cut that up the, oh yeah. So Casey and I made it. We get to have the first taste of it. Um, Look how flaky that beautiful crust is. I know. Right? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to cut us a little piece of it. Pull it out of here. Right. So as I cut it, you're going to see, right, it's got the bottom pie crust on there, right? Beautiful, flaky, cooked up nicely, my top. Filling is in there. It's not even a whole piece there. It's, oh, it's, it's not even thicker a whole piece. than that. Yeah, it's, it's totally thicker than that. Okay. But I'm going to take yours. I'm going to pull a little bit. A little bit. Lots of mm -hmm. here. Right, I know. Yeah, I'm going to blow on it because it's, it's hot. I, I can feel myself. it's hot. Mm. Oh my God. I know, right? Okay. So, y'all can find out what you're having for dinner. We're going to have the pie. Yeah, the pie. Yeah. Um, mm. Again, things that I change about this is, again, I do a very slow cook on it, a little bit higher heat, and continually add that Guinness. Um, that's why we're really getting a very deep, beautiful flavor to it. Right. You can really actually taste that stout Guinness in there as part of it. Um, I wish I'd been able to find parsnips because, again, I think it adds a, a nice starchy piece to it. Now they don't have plenty of starch, right? The pie crust, but the filling is a nice starch that way. Mm -hmm. um, so it's nice. Good on potatoes, but for me, I think potatoes get up really mushy mm -hmm. when I do them in this filling. Um, so not my favorite feeling <laughs> in my mouth when I'm eating. So, yeah. Um, so we'll let it cool down just a little bit before we serve it for dinner. Uh, what we're going to serve it with tonight actually is just some simple sautéed um, zucchini and uh, yellow squash. I have added it to a pan with a little bit of olive oil, some salt and pepper. That's all the treatment it's going to get. I'm going to sauté that up, serve it as my side for this, and we're all going to be crazy full by the end of it. So, um, maybe rock. My yes. dear friend Casey, thank you so much for joining me on Gwynny TV. Thank you for having me. I have had tons of fun. Uh, and uh, next time, what I've decided, I believe I'm going to cook on um, Woody TV probably maybe next weekend or maybe in the, in, even in the middle of the week, I'm going to do some apricot chicken. Because again, it's a standard for my camp kitchen. Um, I serve it over a um, toasted almond couscous and, uh, and it's just, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. So I think I've done a lot of beef stuff at this point. So we'll do some, uh, we'll do some, uh, so the chicken dishes maybe coming up. So. Uh, I love you all. I hope you're all keeping safe. Until later, it's Gwenny TV. Love you. Bye-bye.